My dear friends, I welcome everyone tonight to the heart of Jesus and Mary Ministries. And today we are going to listen to the Word of God as presented from Jonah chapter 3, verse 1 to 10. Jonah chapter 3, verse 1 to 10. And I'm reading from the New King James Version of the Bible. Amen. Now, the word of the Lord came to Jonah the second time, saying, Arise, and go to Nineveh, that great city, and preach to it the message that I tell you. So Jonah arose and went to Nineveh, according to the word of the Lord. Now, Nineveh was an exceedingly great city, a three-day journey in extent. And Jonah began to enter the city on the first day's walk. Then he cried and said, Yet forty days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. So the people of Nineveh believed God, proclaimed their fast, and put on sackcloth from the greatest to the least of them. Then word came to the king of Nineveh, and he arose from his throne and said, and Let aside his robe, covered himself with a sackcloth, and sat in ashes. And he caused it to be proclaimed and published throughout Nineveh by the decree of the king and his nobles, saying, Let neither man no beast, head, no flock, taste anything. Do not let them eat or drink water. But let man and the beast be covered with sackcloth and cry mightily to God. Yes, let everyone, everyone turn from his evil way and from the violence that is in his own hands. Who can tell if God will turn and re relent and turn away from his fierce anger so that we may not perish? And this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to you, Lord Jesus. My dear friends in Christ, the story of Jonah's trip or mission to Nineveh is not a new thing for us. We have been hearing so many messages in this ministry and from the church on how God sent Jonah to Nineveh. So I'm not going to go through the basics of the story of Jonah, but I'm going to focus tonight on what happened in Nineveh? You know, how Nineveh heard the word of God and they repented. The Bible says in John, Jonah chapter 3, verse 10, Jonah chapter 3, verse 10, that God saw by their actions how they turned from their evil way. God saw by their actions, Jonah 3, verse 10. God saw by their actions how they turned from their evil way. I am stressing this sentence, this verse of the scripture, because that is the focus of today's prayer. God saw their actions, not what they intended to do, not what they were planning to do, not the person that they are planning to do, but what they were doing. God saw their actions. And instead of cursing them, instead of destroying them, as he destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, God rather forgave them and he blessed them because God saw their actions. Do you know that you may have done something that deserve certain terrible punishment. But because of your action, your repentance, God can spare you. 
God is a God of mercy. A God who is faithful to his words. I've heard people say that action speaks louder than voice. Or action speaks louder than uh, words. That is true. In fact, we don't need to, have to look any further reference to prove that sentence than the story of Jonah and Nineveh. Jonah delivered the message of repentance to Nineveh, and Nineveh repented. And God forgave them, and God blessed them. If Judas, in spite of the evil he did in betraying Jesus, had he repented, he would have ended up the way he ended up. If Saul, the old King Saul in the, in the Old Testament, if he had repented of the evil he did, God wouldn't have turned his back on him. Peter is a classical example of a man who saw the error he did and then he repented. And God forgave him. And God will see, use him. He is, he, is the, he is given the key of the kingdom of God. The key, the foundation of the church. He is this, the rock of the church. For you, I will build my church. Actions. You may tell me I love you, but if your attitude does not show that you love me, it is just an empty symbol. There's great power in actions. Even in the human realm, we judge people not just by what they say, but by what they do, what they say, and how they deliver what they do or promise. People lose confidence in government when they see that what government promised to do is not what they're doing, or they're not doing it at all. You lose confidence. And so action speaks louder than voice. And we see a classical reality of this in Nineveh. Nineveh hears the word of God. From the prophet Jonah. And they declared a fast of repentance. Even the king himself joined the fast and prayers. The king was sackcloth and sat on the, on the ash. Covered himself with ashes. A king. A king. Imagine a man hearing this message tonight and they're deciding to invite his family that look who are going to join the church in fasting for 40 days and 40 nights. And they're deciding not to cover himself with sackcloth, not to go and uh, get some wood, burn it and cover himself with ashes, but from the depth of his mind, decide that he is going to be a new person in Christ. He's going to repent from his evil ways. And the God seeing their response forgave the people, forget, forgave their sins, and they spared the city of Nineveh. Nineveh was a great city. Now the Bible says that it was a great city. But it was a city full of iniquities. You see that? God saw in Nineveh a people who were not just sorry for their sins, but who took action. It is not enough to say, I'm sorry. It's good to say, I'm sorry to God for what you have done, for what you have done. But it should not stop with, I am sorry, Lord. It must transcend into the level of our actions showing that we are truly sorry. It is actually our actions 
that portray that we are sorry. <laughs> Nineveh took action to show their intention to change. And God bless them. This very message is inviting us to seek the face of God in this period and season of Lent. We are fasting for 40 days. Oh, that reminds me. The king of Nineveh declared a 40 day fast. Jonah chapter 3, verse 4. You see that? Jonah says in Jonah chapter 3, verse 4, yet 40 days from now, Nineveh will be overthrown. But Nineveh repented and was not overthrown. If we repent of our sins and seek the face of God, we shall likewise be blessed. This story is also giving us an insight into the, the sacrament of reconciliation that God gave to us to the church. Especially the, the, the merits of, of penance, of doing penance. When the priest is giving you penance to do, God, God is using him to invite you to show by your action that you have truly repented and that you are sorry for what you did. Confession without penance is questionable. Nineveh did confession and they did penance. <laughs> the church teaches that the sacrament is not complete until we have shown the Lord that we intend to change through an act of penance. It's not that God is doubting us. I mean, He sees in the Spirit. He sees everything. You know, it's not that He doubts our contrition. Rather, He knows that true contrition shows itself in our attempt to make amends and, uh, you know, avoid the situations that lead to, uh, to sin. In fact, I would like to say that our voice, our, our actions outside the confessional speaks louder. <laughs> it speaks more eloquently than our words inside the confessional. Think about that. God wants a people that will change. He has sent the Holy Spirit to help us to change. We are not the ones changing our lives. We are not the ones that are changing ourselves. We cannot even change ourselves. Paul wanted to change himself. But he saw himself doing evil. He saw himself doing what he didn't want to do. And he started to cry. Does it mean there is another Paul in me? Does it mean there is one man in me that is remote controlling me? Does it mean there is something that is controlling me beyond me? And he said, this is like a thorn in my flesh. God help me. And God said, my son, my grace is sufficient for you. We cannot change ourselves. But if we give our heart to the Holy Spirit to make the change, the Holy Spirit will do the change. The Holy Spirit is the vehicle, you know, the, the carrier for change. Anyway, you see, darkness turning to light, the Holy Spirit is there. Anyway, you see, what is confessed being pursued, that is to say, we, we are sorry for our sins when we pray, and then we walk towards, by our actions, what to confess. That's the work of the Holy Spirit. It helps us to come close to God. Help us to point our sins. The Holy Spirit convicts. 
convicts conviction is one of the actions of the Holy Spirit in our lives to point out our sins to make us come to God the Holy Spirit He wants to give us a new heart the heart of God He wants to change our heart it's a process you see an armed robber or a prostitute or a rebellious child becoming godly it is the action of the Holy Spirit you see that Remember Ezekiel chapter 36, verse 26. And I will give them a new heart and a new spirit. And I will take away the heart of stone and give them the heart of the flesh, the Holy Spirit. We need Him in our time, in our families, in our individual lives. We need the Holy Spirit to help us. <laughs> the Holy Spirit gets into our hearts and it helps us to convict us of, of our sins. And then it doesn't leave us there. He helps us to, to have the desire to come to God. To embrace God. <laughs> he invites us to God. You see that? So as we confess our sins... As the Holy Spirit invites us, then the same Holy Spirit helps us to change. We cannot do that against our will. You understand what I'm talking about? It is up to us to confess our sins and do penance. But that cannot happen without the help of the Holy Spirit. And it cannot happen without us opening our hearts for that change. That's why in Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 15 and verse 19, God himself was talking through the prophet. As I present before you life and death, and let heaven bear me witness that I have told you to choose life. God doesn't, God, does, God doesn't force us to change. He doesn't force. So he continues to lobby. He continues to nudge. Continues to, you know, torture us. Continue to walk in us, hoping that we accept His voice. It's like someone knocking at the door. Oh, that reminds me, Revelation three verse twenty. That Jesus knocking at the door. Whoever opens his heart, he will come in and dine with him. That is it. The Holy Spirit continues to knock. Allow me to come in and give you a new heart and live in you. The Holy Spirit cannot leave us. Until he has completed what he wants to do in our lives. He wants to see a heart of Jesus in us. But it is up to us to accept the Holy Spirit. <laughs> As we accept him, God will change us, change our hearts, and give us the grace to help us make efforts that ordinarily wouldn't have been possible. The good news is that God loves us. He loves us so much. And He loves us to the point that He wants to help us. He wants to bring us into a new life. He wants to give us a share in His power and His grace. He wants to help us to start all over. So don't think, oh, because I've fallen several times, then it's over. No, the Bible says that the righteous man falls seven times and still rises. That's a great deal, right? So we're asking the Holy Spirit to pierce our hearts so that our repentance bears the fruit in action in the name of Jesus. My dear friends, look at this great city, Nineveh. A city full of sin and iniquity. Jonah did not see why Nineveh should deserve repentance, why they should deserve the mercy of God. He wanted them to dis be destroyed, just like Sodom and Gomorrah. But he was thinking as Jonah. He was thinking as man. But not as Jesus, not as God. 
God is merciful. Jonah was seeing a city full of sins. Sinners. Sin so much that God was seeing a city that have potentials for evangelists. A city that have potentials for men of God. A city that could do great things in his name. He was seeing what Jonah was not seeing. Jonah wanted the city to die, to be destroyed. Jonah knew that God was merciful and that God would show the mercy. And that's why he didn't want to go and deliver that message to Nineveh. My dear friends in Christ, do you see that the city, when they repented, God blessed them? Even the king, he said, not even the animals who eat food, that everybody will fast, even babies, even nursing mothers, they were fasting. When a leader is godly, it, it reflects in the, in the people, in the populace. When if the, the head of the family is a spiritual leader, when the head of the family is a man of prayer, fears God, you see it reflecting in the affairs of the family. God is talking to us to reflect on how we handle our families, how we're raising our families. I will like this king. This king wasn't going to church. But we hear the message of God repented. And immediately, God blessed them. Can we do the same thing? <laughs> the king was crying to God. He wrote a letter to everywhere in his province. Let everyone turn from his evil way and from the violence that is in his hands. That if God, that God may show mercy if he sees our repentance, and God showed mercy. Many of us are like Jonah, sent to Nineveh, but we are not, we are not delivered the message to Nineveh. Jonah did not want to pray for Nineveh. Do you know why God sent you to that city? Do you know why God allowed you to live in, in Atlanta? Do you know why God allowed you to live in California? Do you know that in the mind of God that you are the Jonah sent to that city? To stand on the altar of prayer and pray that evil shall not prevail in that city. To pray for repentance of that city. That your great city, that your city that is full of population, do you know that God can use your prayer to close the abortion clinic, to close the nightclubs, to close the life of drugs, to decongest prison? Do you know that? Are you the Jonah? Just as this prayer was about to start, and I was asking God, please, what do you want us to pray tonight? He said, pray for the city where you live. This is a call. This is God talking to somebody. This is God talking to me. This is God talking to you. God says, we shall pray for your city. We shall pray for our cities. It is time for me to pray for my city. God is calling us. Jesus. The reason why what is happening that is happening because people of prayer have not done what they were supposed to do. Sometimes we incapacitate God because we don't pray. God uses our prayers to do things. If Jonah had not gone to Nineveh, would Nineveh have repented? Of course no. They never would have been destroyed. But God is looking for somebody who will say, send me, Lord. <laughs> 
God is looking for somebody who will stand in the gap that I shall not destroy the city. Ezekiel chapter 22 verse 30 says, I look for someone among them who would build up the wall and stand before me in the gap on behalf of the land so that I would not have to destroy it. But I found none. What a shame. That God sent Jonas, so many Jonas. I'm not talking about one Jonah. So many Jonas in that city. And all of them are not none of them is Jonah. None of them is a prophet doing what's supposed to do. None of them are doing what God wants them to do. None of them are pursuing the the repentance of souls. So many are busy pursuing dollar. When you are pursuing dollar, instead of pursuing the harvest of souls, you are like Jonah running to the wrong direction. Jonah was asked to go to Nineveh, but Jonah went to the opposite direction. He gave himself a mission to Tarsus. But God told him to go to Nineveh. Even though you may be living in Nineveh and uh, you are not doing what God wants to do, you are in another place. Many of us are not playing our spiritual roles. Today we are going to pray for the city where we live. As Jonah, we are going to step, really step into that city. Spiritually, we are going to step into that city. And pray for the government. And pray for the people. And pray for the church. We are going to stand the gap. Bible says in Ezekiel 22, verse 30, I look for someone to stand the, who will stand in the gap. Are you the one? If every one of us will stand the gap tonight, God will say, and Ezekiel 22, verse 30 would have been rewritten, I look for someone among them to stand the gap and I found many because of you but if none of us will pray for the city where we live then God will continue to cry according to Ezekiel 22 verse 30 I look for someone among them who will stand the gap but I found none let God find somebody today let him find somebody in you and through you Jesus Isaiah chapter 63 verse 5 says, I looked and there was no one to help. God wants you to help him in evangelism, in praying for that city. Are you going to accept it? Are you going to accept it? Let us cry to the Lord. When we offer our prayers for your city, God's divine intervention will bring victory in areas that you had not even thought about and God will receive all the glory. We all are seeing children depart far and far from God. We see young children shooting parents. We see men desiring other men and women desiring other women. We see the ungodly bragging. We we'll see the churches going to sleep. You see that? This has to come to an utter end. Prayer for your city is one of the catalysts for change and the two for revival. Let us pray. Jesus, Father, we thank you for this message this night. And as you have invited us to be like the Jonah, to pray for our cities. So, Lord, we are praying this wonderful moment. Asking you, Father, to empower us in this prayer and to use this prayer to pull down the altars of Baal in the city where I live. Every altar of Baal in the city. Altar of drugs in the city. Author of homosexualism in the city. Author of moral decadence in the city. 
We command it to begin to melt. We command it to begin to melt. Anywhere you are, begin to pray now. Jesus, let the power of the Holy Ghost take over. Let the Holy Spirit flow like a wind. In the name of Jesus. Jesus, every evil altar, evil altar in the house, every altar, evil altar in the society, evil altar in the churches, powers that are attacking the people of God, powers that are causing drugs to be to undergo increase in the city, powers that are sponsoring miscarriage in the city, powers that are causing evil in the city, that river that is flowing in the city, that is causing miscarriage, spiritual miscarriage, psychological miscarriage, we command that city to begin to undergo revival now. We command that river to begin to undergo healing now. According to Second Kings chapter 2, verse 19 to 22, where God used the prophet Elisha to pray over the river in Jericho that was causing miscarriage land. And he prayed and said, Oh, you land, oh, you water be healed. And the water was healed. And Second Kings chapter 2, verse 22 says, And from that day to day, the water was healed. The land was healed. What is that evil river that you flow in your city? That river shall be healed. In the name of Jesus, what is the river in that city? That river that is causing troubles, that is causing drugs, that is causing abortion, that is causing crisis in broken marriages and crisis in families, turning families to house of commotions. May God rebuke them now. Who rebuke that spirit now? Let that river be healed. Let there be healing and revival in the land. Let there be repentance in the land. Every spirit causing the people of my city to be in the sleeping mood, not to be praying. Father, we stand against that spirit. That altar of sleepiness, we command it to come fire. In the name of Jesus. Jesus. We pray that the Holy Spirit will identify the key issues for prayer for your city. Yes, my Lord. Through this corporate prayer, let wonder is going to happen in the city. Throughout the cities in the world. Jesus. 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 May the churches become praying churches. May churches begin to pray for repentance. May churches be centering on harvest of souls and not on money, not on dollar. Every altar raised in churches that have made churches like Jonah to be going to a different direction. May God deliver such church, deliver such pastor, deliver such people. Yes, my Lord. The church is like Jonah that is supposed to be sent to Nineveh. That's why God brought the church to go to Nineveh. But some of the churches have been swallowed by the big fish. Big fish of corporate enterprise, big fish of financial pursuits, big fish of some powerful government elements. They cannot afford to go contrary to what they want. And so they preach according to what they want to hear. The church is supposed to say it the way it is, raw, not pleasing anybody. When the church is saying it the way they, they want to say it on their own, not the way God wants it, that is not a church. That is a church that is swallowed. Jonah represents churches that are swallowed by the big fish, swallowed by the culture. Many churches have lost their identity. Many men of God have lost their identities. Many of them have been swallowed by the big fish. And they cannot preach again. When Jonah was in the belly of the fish, was Jonah preaching? No. Jonah was no more preaching. Why he was in the belly of the fish? He wasn't preaching. Was he a prophet? Yes. Was he a prophet before he entered the fish? Yes. Was he a prophet when he was in the belly of the fish? Yes, he was. But he was not preaching. When you are doing what God has not asked you to do, you are like Jonah. You are not preaching. You are not doing what you are supposed to do for God. Your calling 
is swallowed. But Jonah came back to his senses while in the belly of the fish. Let the church come back to their senses in the name of Jesus. Many churches have been swallowed. Some have been frozen. Frozen churches. A frozen church is a church that is cold. The message that comes from the altar is cold. It doesn't touch the mind of the people. The sermon may be eloquent, enticing, full of drama, but there is no power in it. It is no more the gospel of Jesus. The gospel of Jesus has the power to transform the mind. If you go to church and you come back the same, it has become a social club. Church is meant to change us. When the church went to Nineveh, that is through the minister of Jonah, then the, you see the Nineveh changing. People cannot change unless the church changes. People cannot change unless the church is doing his work or her work. Jesus. When Jonah repented while in the belly of the fish, God saw his repentance after three days and he commanded the fish to navigate to the shores of of Nineveh. God took that fish to Nineveh. He took Jonah by force to Nineveh. Don't allow rebellion to cause you to be forced to go to where God wants to go. <laughs> we are praying that every power that has swallowed the church may that power like the fish vomit the Jonah. Vomit the church in the name of Jesus. Let the church be a praying church again. Papa. As the fish navigated to the shores of Nineveh, so Lord, may the fish that have swallowed the church begin to navigate and fight its way to Nineveh. That Nineveh shall be saved. That your people shall be saved. That my city shall be saved. In the name of Jesus. Jesus. We stand again the gospel of men. That are coming from the pulpit these days. Father help us and deliver us. Deliver our men of God. Deliver us Lord and protect them. Protect every one of us. Father let the church come back to full fire. Let the church be the apostolic church. Let the church be a church of fire. Not a church that when little headaches come, they will call 911. But a church, when little headaches come, they go on their knees. A praying church. Let there be revival in the church. Let there be revival in the society. Open your mouth and pray that prayer. Open your mouth and pray that prayer. Let there be revival in the church. In the name of Jesus, when there is a revival in the church, then there is a revival in the, city, in the city. Then there is a revival in the society. Yes, my Lord. Jesus, we are praying now. My people begin to pray. Let the power of God begin to revive the church. Begin to revive the church. The church that is frozen. Begin to tower now. Begin to melt now. Begin to receive fire now. Begin to receive revival now. In the name of Jesus, let them be revival in the church. Every occultism in the church, occultic elements in the church, occultic powers in the church, occultic altars and temples in the church, we command them to be destroyed. In the name of Jesus, my Lord and my Father, may you use Isaiah 14 verse 23, the sweeping broom of destruction, to sweep their church clean. In the name of Jesus, let your church never be a wasteland. Father, let there be revival. Revive our ministers. Revive the church leaders. Father, oh Lord, we are praying for revival. Father, deliver your people. In the name of Jesus. 
Jesus. Let the church move to Nineveh. Let the church on going to Nineveh preach. When Jonah went to Nineveh, Jonah preached to the great and the small, to the king, to the small, to everybody, even to the animals. Do you know in church today, many Jonas are preaching to the poor, the weak, the untrue, they're not preaching to the kings. You know that the president, the prime minister, the governor, the county leader, the, the, the CEO, you know they are doing something wrong. You know that that powerful man that brings the highest money in the church is doing evil. We cannot tell him he's evil. You cannot tell him. That is a disaster. Jonah went and told the king, said, King, 40 days you'll be destroyed if you don't repent. Jonah, the, the king did not allow Jonah to say it twice. He repented. The animals repented. We often say that animals don't have senses, but the animals repented. They hear the word of God and repented. Some of us, our money, our power, our influence have made us so powerful that we think we are God ourselves. That was how Nebuchadnezzar thought that he was God. He looked to his kingdom and saw that he felt he was God. And God said, my friend, you have crossed boundary. I've been, I've been, I've been patient with you. I've been in watching you, ignoring some of the errors, but now you have encroached into a territory you're not supposed to go. You say you are God? Okay. God gave me a vacation in the forest to go and uh, have vacation with the animals. He was there with rabbits, with rodents, with rats, and they were all, they were all struggling for grasses. All of them. God allowed him there. He was feasting with the animals. Sleeping under the trees. Sometimes he would run with the squirrels. And all of them would go up and to the trees. All of them with monkeys. He was eating with them. When he came back to his senses. By that time he was looking like a monster. Looking like a beast. He could not shave again because animals don't shave. By the time he was coming out, all the hairs of his body looked look like that of Gulila. And uh, behold, he came out not as a king again. When we rebel against God, God will humble us and we will lose our human identity and dignity. Any man that rebels against God, who gave him identity, will lose that identity. Because our identity is in him. You may remember we are his image. So we rebel against him, then he makes us to, to be reprobate. He gave, he gave repro, reprobate mind to Nebuchadnezzar. And he went into vacation with animals. By the time he came back from that vacation, he took a microphone and started preaching. Here, everywhere in my province, I have discovered there is a God who created heaven and earth. He became a preacher. Because God humbled him. Many of us, God even humbled us, and yet we don't even recognize him. He called to break us, and yet we are stubborn. <laughs> Jesus. We are praying against the spirit of pride in the society. Spirits are making corporations, people, because of their power and influence, and their education and knowledge, they forsake God and use their gifts to prove that there is no God, and even fight God. We are praying for their repentance in the name of Jesus. We are praying that the ministers will be bold to preach against the evil in land, even if he's the president. Even if it's a powerful corporation, 
Even if they, that person that is in charge of the financial life of the church, God can do to that person. Let the church be a praying church. Jesus. We pray that the eyes of the spiritual leaders of the state will be enlightened to understand the corporate destiny of the city. Jesus. We pray for the government. Sometimes they get confused because they don't know God. If you don't know God, you get confused. You ban marijuana and then after you, you, you legalize it. Confusion. Reprobate mind. You sanction man, marry man, woman, marry woman, and then children, nobody should talk children, nobody should um, correct the children, they should do what they want to do, uh, they have their own identity, they have their own dignity to protect, don't touch them, don't beat them, don't, uh, don't, don't, uh, don't, don't, don't direct them. And that's the teaching of the society. Why God tells us, teach the child the way he will go. And when he grows up, he will all depart from it. The society says, no, don't teach a child the way he will go. He will go. When he grows up, he will know the truth. He will follow it. How can he follow the truth when he doesn't know the truth? Somebody should teach him the truth. And how can he know the truth unless he hears the truth? How can he hear the truth unless somebody tells the truth? How can somebody tell the truth unless somebody says the truth? How can somebody say the truth unless somebody knows the truth? How can you say the truth and know the truth unless you read the Bible? Unless you're a child of God? Unless you go to the Word of God? And so the society is sick because it's devoid of the Word of God. Jesus. <laughs> we are praying against the spirit of drugs, spirit of alcohol, spirit of illicit lives, spirit of sex everywhere. May God pull them down. May God pull such enterprise down. May God paralyze such spirits down. May God cripple such spirit tonight. Every evil altar in the city, we command you. As we read the altar of fire to be destroyed by fire in the name of Jesus. Every camp of the devil against my city, camp of the enemies, oppressing the city, causing accidents in the city, causing joblessness in the city, causing miscarriage in the city, causing sicknesses in the city. I command you now, I stand against you now, in the name of Jesus, begin to destroy now, begin to destroy now. Jesus, deliver my city. I call my city with the blood of Jesus. I minister the blood of Jesus upon my city in the name of Jesus. You spirit of sickness, you epidemic that is rampant in my city. I command you in the name of Jesus. Pack the and go and go to the abyss. Let my city be cleansed. Let my city be cleansed in the name of Jesus. <laughs> We pray that the leaders will have a godly mind. If a leader will have a godly mind, it is wonderful. Can you imagine the government house, the White House, becoming a house of prayer? That's amazing. You see it reflecting in governance. You see it reflecting in America. You see it reflecting in your country, in your city. In Jonah's story, don't you see that God, Jonah went to the king's city, went to the king's palace, the government house, and prayed to the king. The king, 40 days, if you don't repent, your city will be destroyed. You will be destroyed. He repented. His house became a house of prayer. The palace, the government house, the white house became a house of prayer. Let us pray for the government. They need prayer. Many of them are confused. Many of them don't know God. Many of them are there as instruments of the devil to make laws, lobby for laws 
that are anti-Christian. And when the laws are made, you start crying. Unknown to you that you are supposed to be praying against such forces in the government circles. And so we pray for the presidents of the countries, all the different countries in the world. We pray for them, for God to arrest their minds. We pray for Trump, that he will have a godly mind, that he will embrace the Holy Spirit, that he will allow God to take over his life and leadership, that he will allow the government house to be a house of prayer, that as the time of Jonah, that the, the king allowed himself to repent and his family to repent and his family, the extreme family and the entire nation to repent, so may he be bold to stand before the media, before the American people, to declare himself a man of positive change in this country, a man of prayer. Let him receive the boldness to do it. For many will give their life to Christ when they see their president living a life of prayer. There are many forces that want to weaken the president, making them to do wrong things. Many of them have good intentions to do good things, but the forces are terrible. That's why it's good to pray for them. The Bible tells us, even in First Timothy uh, 2, verse 1 to 2, to pray for your leaders. Pray for them. So we're praying for the government. We're praying, we're asking God to touch them. To touch them. To give them a new mind. A godly mind. A godly spirit. God to touch them. God to touch them. May God touch them. May God deliver them. May God make way for them. May God give them the spirit of prayer. May house, the White House become a house of prayer. May he become a house of prayer. May the power of God flow in that house. In the name of Jesus. Jesus. The Bible is admonishing us. First Timothy chapter 2 verse 1 to 2. Therefore I exhort you. First of all, that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and even thanksgiving be made for all men, for all kings, and all who are in authority, that they may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all goodness and godliness and reverence. Father, we are praying tonight. Let it be changed in the city. Let it be changed in the land. Let the land repent, Lord. Let the land repent. Remove every anti-Christian rules and regulations that are getting approved as in the government circles. Father, arise. Holy Ghost, arise. Jesus. 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 Touch your people. Touch your people. We pray that more houses of prayers, real prayers, will be springing forth. Not a place where the devil will be living, but the real house of prayer. Let it be a, a house of trumpet, a place to trump, to blow trumpet for Jesus. Jesus, why have been praying that how what house will be a house of prayer, and let Trump will become a trumpet for God, in the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. Let him be a trumpet, the voice of God. In the time of Nineveh, the president, the king, became a trumpet for the repentance of the people. That's what the Bible says. <laughs> Jesus. Jonah chapter 3, verse 7 to 9. You see how the, the, the king became a trumpet. Preaching, telling the people to repent. And people repented. And they were saved. Yes, my Lord. <laughs> Every power that's attacking the house of God in the city where I live, let such powers be crippled tonight. Every witchcraft spirit attacking the church or witchcraft spirits that have gone into the church already, leaving the church, to the prayer, Father, may you sweep the church clean with your sweeping broom of destruction 
of Isaiah chapter 14, verse 23. Let your church not become a house of owls. Let it not become a house of jackals. Let it not be a place to transact currency. For in the time of Jesus, Jesus saw the synagogue becoming a house of currency exchange, a, 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 a den of thieves. And he was very disappointed. And he scattered the table. He turned the table upside down. We are praying and asking God, let there be volcanic eruption in the churches. Let this prayer become a prayer that will be used to cause the table, the table of unrighteousness, to be turned upside down in the churches in my city. In the name of Jesus. Jesus. Let your wind blow in the city. Let your wind blow. Let your wind blow. Wind of revival. Occultic thrones in the churches. Powers that people cannot point at them, no one can speak against them. Father, speak against the free player. Let there be changes in the city. Let people come back. Let the message, the preaching from the pulpit, become the preaching of Jonah. Let the church come back to our senses. Let we, the minister of God, come back to our senses, Lord. Many of us have turned your churches, your ministry into a gambling place, into a place of entertainment. No solid message. <sighs> Jesus. Let us cry with Jesus. Let us lament with Jesus. Who on seeing what was happening in the house of his father, turned the table upside down. My dear people of God, let us pray that the Hannahs, the Esthers, the Joshuas, the Davids and the Boras, the Jails and the and Barracks of your city will arise. There was Esther in the city where Ahasuerus was a king. But there was a spirit of death that was sent to the city to exterminate the Jews. But God used Esther to save the life of the Jews. Esther went into prayers three days and three nights. No food, no water. We call it Esther fasting. She was a Jonah in that city. She went to the king and got heaven. That saved her people. If Esther had said, I am living in the palace, what concerns me? Millions of people would have lost their lives. You may say this prayer, what concerns me? But do you know that your prayer this night can save someone, that child, who would have been, who would have been aborted tomorrow? Can save millions who would have been aborted this month? Prayer of Esther, a woman of prayer. Prayer of Deborah. A man, a woman of prayer. These are women, Hannah. Do you know that there, there are so many Hannahs, people who don't have children, in the city. Not that they are actually barren, but because the spirit of barrenness in the city had made them captives. How can they begin to experience, you know, conception unless? How can I experience fertility unless somebody becomes the ally in the land? It was when Hannah was at Shiloh that she was crying at the temple. Eli saw her, thought that she was drunk. She said, no, I'm not drunk. I'm a woman that's heartbroken. I need a child. He said, go. By this time next year you have a child. Because there was a lie. Supposing that Eli was on vacation with his family somewhere, not doing what he was supposed to be doing, Hannah would have remained barren. Many people in the land are barren because somebody has not taken up that in prayer in that city. 
Goliath was the rise in Israel. The whole nation. But when David said enough is enough, indeed enough became enough. Let us pray that Esther's in the land shall wake up. That Hannah's in the land shall, I mean, Hannah's in the land shall be delivered. That Joshua's in the land shall pull down the walls of Jericho. That David's in the land shall pull down the Goliaths. That the Bola's in the land shall be people of prayer. Let them begin to arise. Let them begin to arise. As Joshua is arising tonight, the walls of Jericho shall form. As David is arising tonight, Goliath shall fall. Goliath in the shall fall. In the name of Jesus. Yarabo Shereba. As Esther is arising tonight. Masekendere Bobo. Jesus. That seat of death in the land. That want to destroy people. That seat of miscarriage. That seat of death. That arrow of death. But shall be destroyed now. In the name of Jesus. Begin to pray now. Begin to pray now. Let there be reason of the prophets. The prophets in the land. People who are prophets in the land. But they are sleeping prophets. Sleeping giants. Sleeping Jonas. May they wake up. May they wake up. May they wake up. In the name of Jesus. Jesus. We are praying for new strategies of victory. That will be released in your city. The enemy has set strategies on how to imprison the whole city. If I ask you now, is your city world? You tell me, no, my city is not the world. But spiritually, your city could be world. So that nothing good comes in. World from godly enterprise. World from anything good. But the world shall fall tonight in the name of Jesus. There's a strategy that for the world to fall. And we're asking God to give that new strategy of victory that will pull down the walls against the city in the name of Jesus. <laughs> the church is the eyes of God, the ears of God, the, 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 the legs of God. But the church, many of the churches are crippled. In fact, some of them are blind. Some of them are deaf. And so there are no more church. So we pray for the church in the city. That they will have eyes to see, ears to hear, that the Lord is saying in this hour, and that we will grow, the church will grow in the knowledge of God, in the name of Jesus. Let the church be delivered. Let the church begin to see. We pray for the same in the church, so that the church will understand the signs of the time. The signs of the time. The time has signs. And is the church is supposed to tell the the society the, the signs of the time. If you read the Re Revelation chapter three, you see the the, the the what the spirit was saying to the to the church church in Asia, uh, to the churches in in, in Philadelphia, to the churches in Cadusia. The spirit talking to the church to repent and go back to your to your former. Good ways, you know. If you read Revelation chapter two verse four, say you 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 have rejected your former uh, uh, virginity, your former relationship with me, and the church was preaching for repentance because they hear the word of God. Let the church hear the word of God again. Let the church descend the spirits that are speaking. We pray for unity in the churches. Many churches are fighting each other. I tell you the truth. But Jesus in John 17 verse 21 was praying for unity. John chapter 17 verse 11, Jesus was praying for unity. John chapter 17 verse 21, he was praying for unity. Even in verse 22, unity is a mark of Christ. You see that? We pray that believers in the city will, op will operate with boldness. Will be one. Will be people of prayer. May God raise prayer warriors in the land. Let this prayer raise all people of prayer in the name of Jesus. In the land, in the city. Let there be fire. Fire revival. Let there be revival in the land. Jesus. 
We are praying for, for believers in the city to be passionate for the work of Christ Jesus. We pray that the word of God will run swiftly through the city and transform the city. Yes, my Lord. Oh, many of the churches are fighting or warring in the flesh, not instead of in the spirit. We are praying that churches will learn spiritual warfare and begin to war in the spirit and not in the flesh. In the name of Jesus. Jesus. Let the church be a miraculous church. Let the church be a healing church. Let the church be a church for forgiveness of sins. In the name of Jesus. Jesus. We pray that the church of, the, of our city, of my city, we fully preach the gospel in word and in deed. In the name of Jesus. We pray that every plan of the enemy is against, it, against the city be exposed. In the name of Jesus. Jesus. Jesus, deliver your people. Every government of, God, of ungodliness in the city be destroyed tonight. In the name of Jesus. We pray against occultic kingdoms in the city. Witchcraft kingdoms in the city. Let them cast fire, Holy Ghost! Fire! Put down altars of Baal in the city. Let there be justice in the city. Let justice reign in the city where I live. People who are in jail, but they're not supposed to be there. But, but they are there. Because of injustice. May God open the prison gates for them. In the name of Jesus. We we'll tear down the government of injustice in the land. In the name of Jesus. Jesus. Spirits in the city that are causing poor relationships, quarrel, confusion in the city. We command them to be crippled. We command the religious cults to be destroyed. Witchcraft cults and covens in my city expire. In fact, I divorce you. And go to that beach. Spirits that are causing miscarriage in the land, causing crisis in the land, may all of them be arrested. Spirits that are causing divorce rate in the city to be rising. We divorce such spirits in the name of Jesus. Let them go to that beach. Spirit of greed in the land be destroyed by fire. Fire take over. Jesus. Spirit of poverty in the land be arrested. Let God open the doors that we will have financial breakthrough and serve God. Spirit that are making people to be busy pursuing money, pursuing mammon, pursuing gold and silver instead of pursuing life of Jesus. May such spirit catch fire and let there be revival in the land in the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. Spirit that are making young men to be slaves to drugs and sex and alcohol. May such spirits catch fire, catch fire. Spirit of rebellion in the land, so among the youths, be destroyed in the name of Jesus. Let the city be sanctified. Spirits are causing killing, robbery. May they catch fire. We command such spirits to be disabled. We command your spirit to be destroyed and let them be overtaken such that my city shall be called spirit of signs and wonders and miracles and the freedom in the name of Jesus. Let my city be a city where people will be serving God, where people will love to go to church. Every power that causing the pews in the church to be empty on Sundays, let such powers catch fire in the name of Jesus. May God raise godly leaders Raise intercessors in my city. In the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. Let the wisdom grow in, the, in my city. Let understanding grow in my city. Let my city grow spiritually in the word of the Lord. In the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. Jesus. Jesus. Let the doors of the gospel open in my city. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. We we'll cover all the children in the city of Jesus, all the schools, 
in my city will cover up of Jesus. All the hospitals will cover up of Jesus. Let them be healing the hospitals. Let the schools be protected. Let them be teaching our children in my city godly things, not ungodly things. Let children be healed and be protected in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We give you all the glory. We pray for all the prayer lines in my city. Prayer lines from different denominations. May they prosper in prayer, in number, in godliness, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit who pray. Amen and amen and amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We thank you for the message you are giving to us tonight. We we'll cover this message, Lord of Jesus, and we we'll decree. May God, who started this great work tonight, be glorified in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Ancient of Days. In Jesus' mighty name, we we'll pray. Amen. And amen. We pray that this message will never fall on the ground. May this message bear fruit in our lives. In the name of J E S U S Jesus. Amen.